Hey guys, welcome to Reddit Brew. You know the drill. We're back at it again with the r slash entitled people reddit stories. So let's just jump into it, shall we? Venomous reptiles will never be my type. Sorry, hun. Yesterday, I emerged from my warren into the wide world. I thought it was going to be a good day. Little ski and stay package with some friends. Just the ticket before the holiday sucks all the joy out of me. The ski part went about as well as could be expected when a 34-year-old man attempts snowboarding for the first time. Lots and lots of time spent falling on my arse, flat on my face, or wobbling between the two. Apparently, spreading the impact around makes it hurt less. Facts, not in evidence. I did not, however, just find this ski and stay package myself. There were other people there with me. Six of them, as a matter of fact. Here's the cast. Tom, one half of a fabulous couple. Dick, the other half. And if you two read this, you know precisely who Tom is and who Dick is. You shameless libidinists. John, male half of a longtime friend couple. Jane, female half of a longtime friend couple, also expedition organizer and mother hen of the operation, Yzma, female half of the couple I met for the first time yesterday, and Kronk, Yzma's boyfriend. Not the sharpest knife, but proved to be a good dude. So I drove up to the resort to check in and find everyone, and Tom, Dick, John, and Jane had all arrived early. They were idling in the lobby. I said hello and got checked in, and then joined the group waiting for the last pair to arrive. Yzma and Kronk showed up a few minutes after, and I promptly made a fool of myself. Turns out, Isma isn't just model pretty, she's actually a model as her profession. They joined us faster than I could kickstart my brain into functioning normally. When introduced, I nodded to Kronk and said something very suave to Isma. I think it went like, uh, oh, hi, um, wow. Introductions were made, I collected my jaw off the floor, and we all went to our block of rooms to get changed for my all-day torture session. I think everyone else had fun. The actual snowboarding started for me with a new blessing on the bunny hill. I fit right in with all the other 12-year-olds. There were other adults as well, but they mostly just laughed at me and only got told off once for starting a snowball fight. Did manage to avoid smooshing any children, so for me, that's really best behavior. After the lesson, I attempted the bunny hill a few more times and was on the ground more often than I was actually snowboarding. Then it was lodge time to warm up. I procured a cup of hot cocoa and plopped down at our table in the lodge, ready to settle in for a good wine. And I felt someone inside my personal space. It was Yzma, and she was trying to massage my shoulders and make soothing sounds. I objected politely, because for one thing, she was taken, and for another, Kronk started to glare at me. Not at her, at me. Rinse and repeat all day, with a break for a lunch and wine, and then a dinner and wine. Well, I was the only one whining, but I've been told I'm a whiner. The entire day, she kept invading my space and pushing Kronk's buttons. I really didn't want to make a scene, so I never really turned it into a confrontation. Just demurred and moved away. The others noticed as well, and when dinner time came, I got smushed into a booth between Tom and Dick. Thanks for that, guys. They were making plans to go hit the bar after dinner. I demurred the offer. All I wanted to do was eat a jar of pot gummies and try to decide if life's worth living in the morning. Survey's still out on that. Ate half the jar around 8 p.m., was asleep shortly after that, was awoken around 1 a.m. by someone knocking on my door. Open the door, and it's Yzma with a black eye and tears flowing down her face. She said she and Kronk got in a fight, and she's scared to sleep in her room. Can she crash in mine? I was sleepy and intoxicated and didn't really think about it. Just shrugged and said, sure. If I'd been a bit more awake and a bit less in intoxicated, I probably would have been a bit more wary, but it is what it is. She came in, closed the door, and I ate the other half of gummies in the jar and passed out once again. 9am rolls around, and it sounds like someone is using a battering ram on my door. It's Kronk, and Kronk is angry. I'm very confused, and barely remember letting Yzma into my room. Then I'm mad at Kronk for giving her a black eye. Kronk
Bonk is then confused because she asked for one. Apparently she likes it rough and being bruised like that turns her on. Yzma then makes her dramatic entrance, stark naked, and Kronk is no longer confused, just enraged. Our rooms were all booked next to each other, so the smashing and shouting woke up uninvolved parties. Right around when Kronk is going to take a swing, Tom and Dick appear, followed shortly after by Bleary John. Jane doesn't do confrontation. Tom tells Yzma to get some clothes on, while Dick and John try and calm Kronk down. I'm still stoned and bewildered, and then I start putting the pieces of this together, and then I'm mad all over again. She orchestrates this whole thing so that I would get my ass kicked. I look Kronk dead in the eye and say, dude, I didn't touch Yzma. I'm not the slightest bit interested in her. I mean, I'm not interested in anyone right now, but especially not her. Kronk is confused again, and Yzma lets out an indignant squawk. What's that supposed to mean? Venomous reptiles will never be my type. Sorry, hun. To Kronk, I use an app for sleep study. It records when I make noise at night. Let me prove it. Everyone calms down a bit, and Tom removes Yzma from the room because he's not stupid. I show Kronk the app and the record it made last night. Zero apnea events. Woo. The conversation between myself and Yzma was recorded then the covers rustling when I get in, the covers rustling when she gets in, and then the occasional snore and one especially loud fart. I regret nothing. Zero sex noises. Takes about a minute because the app doesn't record unless there's unusual noises. Like, say, gasping for breath because your sleepy brain decided breathing was for suckers before realizing air is important. Kronk listens to the recording, apologizes for the mess she made, and left. I decided I wanted to skip day two of the trip. Just headed home after saying bye and apologizing for the drama to Tom, Dick, Jane, and John. Hey, comparing Yzma to venomous reptiles is an insult to venomous reptiles. They don't deserve that. But do you know what Yzma and Kroc deserve? Each other. They both seem equally as toxic and are honestly a perfect match. Pull the lever, Kronk. And in this case, the lever was Kronk's fist to Yzma's face. OP, the next time you eat a jar full of elevated goodies, maybe put a sticky note on the door that says, do not open to venomous reptiles. And especially don't let them in your bed. I'm sure you learned your lesson after this time though. My mother booked her hotel room right next to us on our wedding night. I, 26 year old female, am getting married in August next year. My father gifted me and my future husband a suite to stay in during the wedding at one of the finest hotels in my town. When my mom found out that we got a suite from my dad, she booked two suites in the same hotel for her, my stepdad, and my brother. My parents have been divorced for 23 years and have been doing petty things like this to one up each other my whole life, so it's nothing new. Yes, Yesterday, my mom called me and wanted to tell me that she has now booked the suites. And what nice staff there are at the hotel. They are so service oriented. They said it wouldn't be a problem to book our suite right next to hubby and yours honeymoon suite. Quite honestly, I was a bit dumbfounded when I heard that. I don't know if I'm oversensitive or being unreasonable, but if there's one thing I don't want, it's spending my wedding night with my mom in the next room. Edit slash update. Thank you for the support, everyone. I thought I would answer some common questions here. The hotel cannot move my mom because my mom booked exactly that room and she would need to change it. They did not release my information to her. My mom knew exactly which room I would stay in, a honeymoon suite, obviously, and which date. I don't want to change hotels. It's one of the most romantic ones in the city I live in, and I don't want to let my mom chase me away. Many of you suggest I talk to her. Well, it's not the first time she's done something like this. She's extremely unreasonable, disregards, and rug sweeps everything. I moved three hours away from her for a reason. Edit, yes, I'm a doormat. I've been conditioned to never speak up against my mother and just avoid conflict with her because it takes too much energy to argue with her and I'm always wrong in the end anyway. All of your comments were very helpful though, but especially one person who PM'd me made me realize how my inaction can hurt my relationship. 
And that was the wake up call that I needed. And we had a long conversation about the incident and how he feels about it all. It was very clear that I needed to talk to my mother and say how I felt about her wanting a room next to us on our wedding night. My mom can be really manipulative in discussions and has a tendency to shift the focus of the discussion away from the problem and onto another detail and discuss that detail instead of the problem. Therefore, I did not dare to talk to her directly, but I wrote to her. I've been thinking a little more about what you said about having a room next to me and my husband on my wedding night, and I'm not really comfortable with you being so close. I only told the hotel that I wanted a room as close to you as possible, not a room right next to you. Saying as close as possible is basically saying, I want a room next door. But I never said that. Me, stepdad, and your brothers just wanted a room near you. That's all. That's fine. But not directly next to me and my fiance. I don't want my family in the next room on my wedding night. It's weird. No response after that from her. I doubt she's going to change rooms. I'm sorry there wasn't a better solution than this. I and my future husband have already gone very low contact with her, but she has my little brother at her house. Can't cut contact with my mom without my little brother being taken from me. Oh man, I relate to this so much. My mom would totally do something like this. When I got married though, we stayed at a really beautiful cottage and I didn't offer my mom a room. It's also funny because the reason I haven't moved away and said sayonara biznatches to my entire family is because I too have teenage siblings who I adore. One of them being LGBTQ and aside from their friends, my husband and I are their biggest supporters, so I could never leave them behind. It's so tough to go no contact with family when we're put into these positions, so I totally empathize with OP. I hope her mom ends up changing rooms, but if not, my petty soul says, make your mom uncomfortable, OP. Be as loud as possible, if you know what I mean. But anyway, that is all for me today. I hope you enjoyed these two entitled people stories. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I truly appreciate when you do, and I will see you in the next Reddit story. Bye!